Hi, I'm Deb from Deb K Hypnosis, and we are here today for a professional hypnotist certification. And I got into hypnosis uh, after being in the wellness field for 22 years. I started out as a massage therapist. I specialize working with medical clients, be it um, pregnancy massage or uh, hospice massage. Um, and then I became a massage therapist teacher. And then what I was finding with my massage clients is that they needed a little something more, something more to empower them. So I became a yoga teacher to teach them stretches and how to take care of their body um, if they're sitting all day in the office how to do stretches so that uh, they could be empowered to take care of themselves. So then I went back uh, to school and I got my bachelor's in holistic psychology where I learned about positive psychology and hypnosis. And I was just so excited about the possibility of working with people that want to make changes in their life and um, how hypnosis is so powerful and accelerates the program. So I'm glad you're here today to become hypnotist and help other people. So on our um, syllabus, the first thing we're gonna talk about is what is hypnosis? So hypnosis is uh, a very natural state. We go in and out of hypnosis all day long. And uh, if you like look at daydreaming, where you just kind of like space out and you're someplace else, even though you're aware of this area, but you're over here in your mind. Road hypnosis is driving down the road, getting to your destination and saying, I don't even remember driving the last couple miles. Um, so they call that road hypnosis. Uh, watching a video game. You know, some of the teenagers I talk with, they watch, they're doing the video game and they're into it and their mom comes in and talks to them and they just don't even hear her. <laughs> they're really focused here. Watching a movie and having a physical reaction, be it scared or laughing, it's not really happening. But yet our body is responding, our mind is responding. Hypnosis is very similar in that we have that complete focus on where the hypnotist is taking us, this guide. And within that, creating the scenario of what we want, um, be it losing weight, and we can see and visualize ourselves being um, lean and strong and feeling good and wearing the clothes that we want to wear. When our mind can see it, and we can feel it on a cellular level, that's when the change happens. So um, it's, it's a really wonderful thing. And when you're in hypnosis, you actually have a hyper suggestibility because we're quieting that mind, the critical mind, the mind that's da 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 da, -da all the time. That way you're open to the suggestions the hypnotist is saying based on what you want to change, what you want. Yes? Are we in the sub... I started reading last night. Are we in the subconscious? What state are we in when, when we're in that hyper... We're, in the, we're opening our subconscious mind to receiving when we're in the hypnosis state, yes. Great. Um, so yeah, we have the critical factor or the critical mind. We also call the conscious mind. And that's um, what we're aware of, the current things we're aware of. The subconscious mind, if you think about, about an iceberg, the critical mind, the conscious mind is just the tip. The subconscious mind is everything we've learned, everything we absorbed, good, bad, ugly, since we've been born. Um, child, children, especially up till seven years old, are a sponge of absorbing their environment. Um, so we may pick up things in our environment when we're young, and now as an adult, we can say, is that really true? 
So a story that I tell um, to people that want to know about the change and our belief system is that there's this mom cooking in the kitchen and she's cooking a ham with her uh, daughter and she takes out a pan and she cuts both ends of the ham off and puts it in the pan and the daughter says why do you cut both ends off of the ham and she said I don't know my mom always did it so the little girl goes into her and see her grandmother in the other room and the grandmother said and she says to the grandmother why when you cook a ham you cut both ends off the pan she goes because I never had a big enough pan Mm. So that was a belief that was just carried along. So how many of those do we have? How many of those seeds were planted, not in any ill way, just as it is, that as an adult, you have the power to say, but is that really true? And that's where you can make the change. May I ask, is 90% of our thinking patterns are from the subconscious, subconscious mind, yes. Right? We're functioning from the subconscious mind. It's incredible. Right. Yeah. Right. So what's in there? <laughs> uh -huh, exactly. So, um, yeah. So age seven, you were saying, right? Seven and under. Yeah, up to age seven is really when we're uh, absorbing our whole environment. Um, So what does hypnosis feel like? That'll be a common question that people will ask you. And what it feels like, I describe it, is that feeling right before you um, fall asleep at night, you're laying in your bed, you're comfortable, you're not asleep yet, but you're kind of feeling that fading in and out. That's what hypnosis feels like. It's very calming, relaxing. When um, clients come in too, when they come out of hypnosis, they may say, oh, I felt like I was floating, floating, I felt light. Others might say, oh, I felt really heavy in the chair. And the other thing they might say of time distortion is you might have been, they might have been in hypnosis for 20, 25 minutes. They're like, wow, that seemed like it was five minutes. Or they may feel like it was a lot longer. Um, so that time distortion is very common um, with, with the hypnosis. And also, um, hypnosis is not sleep. Some people think that it's sleep, and part of that is a stage hypnosis, which will go sleep and click his fingers. And it's just um, like a, a anchor or a symbol yes a trigger to to get them into that state they're not asleep um, if you have a client that falls asleep I will tell you what to do later in future in our uh, future sessions okay um, yeah so that iceberg that we talked about the child being a total sponge they it, that's how they adapt to their environment right and that's how they learn coping skills. If they get feeling, um, if there's tension in the home, if there's nervousness, they might come up with nail biting. They might come up with hair pulling. They, might, they may learn different ways to soothe themselves. But now as an adult, they're like, I hate my nails. I wanna stop this, I've been doing this for so long. And they'll call you to come in. We can help them with that. One of the other things too about the subconscious mind is um, falling asleep at night with the TV on. Can you imagine how much stuff is pouring into your head and your mind, right? You're watching a good show, you fell asleep, now the news is on. And news is fear-based. They tell us all the stuff that's going wrong, right? So limit yourself to that and know what you are putting into your into your mind scrolling on the phone it's hypnotic when you're going on the phone like this your eyes are going like this your eyes are connected to the mind 
It's very hypnotic. Less is better. <laughs> Um, and we'll be going more uh, further into the eye-mind connection, um, why they use the, the stopwatch, right? That watch, it, it really does have something to do with quieting the mind. Okay, so what's the purpose of hypnosis? Well, the purpose is to help make change, right? Helping people to heal and find solutions to the problems they experience, experiencing, which are affecting their lives. We work on everyday problems. Almost all, everything that you're working on is stress, anxiety related. You'll learn in this course when to refer out, when it's not an everyday problem. It's a complex problem. And we can see someone who's seeing counseling on medication. We can get, get a doctor's referral um, for anyone that we feel that needs, that you want that, you know. We will also learn the language that's acceptable as a hypnosis, hypnotist because we are not trained in the medical field as we're not a doctor of psychology. So we want to um, be using the correct language and be it a podcast or with our clients or if you're going to a networking event. So what would that look like? We're talking about fear. <coughs> we're talking about fears. The emotion underneath. Yes. So we're talking about fears, not phobia. Phobia is a dinos. We're not we're not diagnosing anybody. So we are guiding a client and replacing and developing new patterns and habits for promoting a healthy lifestyle and behavior choices. Okay? We're guiding the client and replacing and developing new patterns and habits for promoting healthy lifestyle and behavior um, choices based on what they want. We want to leave our opinion out. If they're coming in and they have a lifestyle that you're not really connecting with and they're totally happy in that, we're not addressing that. We're addressing what they want to change. We're letting go of judgment and what we think they need to change. Example, their religion or non-religion, life choices. Be, caref be careful about your opinions overriding what they came in for. We're always asking questions. Who, yes. who is a client and who is not? Like I had mentioned, we are not um, diagnosing or treating a diagnose. We're, while we're working with stress and anxiety, we're not working with bipolar. We're working with stress and, and anxiety, but we're not working with bipolar, we're not telling them to take medication, we're not telling them not to take medication. We're working with sleep issues, not insomnia, okay? Language and speaking with the client, advertising, doing podcasts, presentations, you wanna be making sure that you are speaking the hypnotist language. In Massachusetts, we are hypnotists, we're not hypnotherapist. Okay, yes. Saying that, there are places like when you create a Facebook business page, there's no hypnotist, there's hypnotherapist. Um, use it discreetly. And that is because the um, field of psychology do not want us stepping on their toes. Okay, we can work with clients when they're on medication or counseling, 
You know, you, if you feel you want a doctor's referral, then you can ask for a doctor's referral. I'll give you a sample of what one looks like, but really all they need to go to their doctor and say, thinking of seeing a hypnotist, and you may just be working on the stop smoking, not on the other portion that they're working with the counselor and doctor with. We can only work with people that can go into hypnosis. Saying that, almost everyone can go into hypnosis. It's a natural state. If someone is heavily medicated, they are on a lot of pain medicines that may, that may or may not be um, a good client for you. We do not work on schizophrenic people. You may feel out you may feel out something, you may feel it out and see yeah, they come in for stop smoking and something else comes up for them, be it trauma, be it abuse, um, and you feel that it's um, just something that you do not want to work with, you can tell them, um, you know, I, I'm recommending you to um, seek out a counseling that can better work with you with that. That's not my specialty. That's how I go away from it. It's not my specialty. Because you want them to get the help that really supports what they need the most. They say as a hypnotist when you're first year to become familiar with kind of the meat and potatoes is to do stop smoking, weight loss, stress, anxiety clients. Once you have that base down and you feel very strong within that, then you can venture off into other things. And there's tons and tons of courses out there. Um, National Guild of Hypnotists, we meet every August in Marlboro. And there's so many hypnotists that come from all around the world. And it's a really great place to um, meet fellow hypnotists as well as learn so many different things. You can really take this as far as you like to go, right? And you may even find that, okay, I really like working with this type of client. You know, uh, women that are middle-aged, that are going through transition, or I, I really enjoy working with children. Or for me, I work with 14 and up. But if I have someone that calls that wants me, you know, I have a 10 year old or I have an eight year old, I know of other hypnotists that love working with children, that's a school teacher, that that's her thing, um, I'll refer them to her. So you can become a networking. And if someone knows that you have a specialty, they'll be like, oh, I know someone exactly that works with that. And a lot of this, again, you'll be able to weed out on the phone. You'll be asking them questions. Um, if somebody calls, say, a lady calls and she said, my husband really wants to quit smoking. I'll, I'll listen to her and then I'll say, well, I really need to talk with your husband too. I want to make sure that this is something he really wants. And I will set up either another phone call or a Zoom with speaking with him. Um, I do it even with, with the children, well, the teenagers, because I, I really want to know what are they looking for? Because what the spouse or the parent might want might be totally different than what the child is, is seeing. Um, so, and, and then also you do a release a parental release, um, which I have forms that I can give you a copy of. Is hypnosis safe? Okay, so abbreviation, abbreviation. You'll hear people talk about this. Happens once in a thousand clients type of thing. Um, will people get emotional? Yeah, but abbreviation is where someone is like shaking their, um, they might have recalled a memory that they really didn't even remember or they don't know why it's coming up. Have confidence in yourself that you can control the situation. You're always in control of the situation. And one of the things you can do to bring someone out of that 
is to have them breathe. And sometimes they're hyperventilating, so what you do is you have them pretend you're blowing into a, a balloon. You want them to exhale first because they're, when they can't breathe, it's like the air doesn't go in, so let them exhale first. So I'll tell them, pretend you're, you're blowing up a balloon and just breathe out. Take that deep breath in now. Fill the balloon up and get them to start. The breath is the first thing that um, regulates the nervous system and you bring them into that, it'll start the calming experience, okay? You don't want to touch them um, because touching them can anchor, which we'll go into further, but it can actually, um, will startle them, it can, uh, they, they can anchor that feeling um, and we don't want to anchor it. So we're talking um, about regression um, that may be spontaneous, but there's also tools you can use to bring them to certain things, uh, regress, regret them, regress them into certain things, but we're doing it safely. They're from afar. They're sitting in a movie theater and seeing it on a movie. They're disassociated from it. They're not in it, um, which gives them that distance to be an observer, to make the change um, and be in a calmer state, okay? They're not reliving it physically. Hypnosis is safe and it works. I've worked with over a thousand clients, guiding them and having them come back to their breath, making the change, feeling great. But the first part of hypnosis is awareness. When you don't, aren't aware of the underlying issue, it will continue. So when they have the awareness, they're shining a light on it, it's already it's already uh, dissipating the power it once had over them. Because now, they get to make the choice what they wanna do with that. Is it really true? Is it my stuff? You know, so that's where it, we're empowering them. That's what we're doing. So hypnosis, they have an overall good feeling. Even if they're working through some heavier stuff, when they're leaving it, your office, they're feeling calm, relaxed, neutral. Unlike, and not, and counseling has its place and talk therapy has its place. Talk therapy can be just rehashing, 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 and oh, time's up, and they walk out the door so open, so raw, and saying, oh my God, I gotta go through the rest of the day. They're never leaving your office like that. Okay, they're always gonna feel good or neutral. You give yourself enough time in between clients, so you want to give yourself, yourself too, that time to come back to a calmer place before you see your next client. I give a half an hour between each client, um, write future notes of what I'm gonna do in the next session. Um, give myself that time to regroup. I have a, a spray that I make up that um, has sage and, um, uh, what do you call it, distilled water. And I just spray to let go of any negative energy. Sometimes I spray it on myself, walk outside, take a deep breath in and out, so that you're letting go of that whole session and then you're present with the next client. Hypnosis can accelerate change because you're overriding the critical conscious mind. Unlike the counseling where you're staying in that critical mind and it's just spinning up here, we're releasing all that chitter chatter 
and they go inside and you it's amazing the awe moments they have and they'll even say what I've been going to counseling for two years on this same thing and and I don't say anything either way because I I'm I know counseling definitely has a place but I've had people come in and say I've already done this I've done that I want to try hypnosis um, and it's there really is a big demand for it because people are getting away from the medication as the first thing to, to do um, maybe it is something down the line that supports them but it's not necessarily the number one thing they're trying to work through it themselves we have the tools we are also going to teach them other tools that they can take home with them we're going to teach them tapping we're going to teach them um, some NLP techniques that are very easy to do and call upon any time okay. so you're making sure the client they come up and out of hypnosis they may feel a little bit lightheaded the end of the session we don't really want to go into a lot of talk we give them a water, ask them how they're feeling. Would you like to share any information? And I just leave it like that. I don't ask them questions. Um, just let them be. Let them be in that place of, of quietness, of peace, um, as they're going out the door. Okay, self-hypnosis. Um, a lot of hypnotists see hypnosis as self-hypnosis. We're the guide. They're creating it. They're going in it in themselves. Um, we are not healers. Don't take away their power. Enhance it and let them see the answers within. It's also having them take responsibility for themselves. And because of the, the um, what's out there about hypnosis, mainly about stage hypnosis, is that you're gonna do this to me. You're gonna make this change. And I always tell them on the phone that we're a team. I'm a guide. <clears throat> and that, um, that there's homework in between sessions so I'm already giving them that this is going to be something we're doing together okay how important is that homework is it it's it could be just listening to the recording I made okay. I record the hypnosis portion for every client not every hypnotist does um, I do I tell them I'm not going to make any alterations if there's a cough or anything it's just as is and to listen to it until I see you next time, two to three times. Um, you can give them one of the NLP tools um, if they're feeling stress and anxiety, getting their water bottle, taking a pen and passing it from one side to the other while they're thinking is changing the pattern in the brain, okay? They're on an airplane and they're working with me about fear of fl um, flying. They're doing pretty good. They've done a bunch of different things. If anything is to come up, you know you have your water bottle, you have a pen, and you just pass it back and forth while you're thinking what you're thinking, breathing. It's, uh, it's um, interrupting the pattern that they had before and creating a new pattern. What does NLP stand for? Neuro Logistic Programming. It was created in the 70s when the computers came out and they kind of were comparing the mind as like a program, you know, has programs and, and that's where they came up with that. The neuro is the, the nerves, logist, logistic is the, the speech um, and connecting all of it. And we'll be going over some of the different things with that too. Um, yeah, so it's always we're doing this together versus 
I'm doing something to them. Um, there's a site called pubmed.gov and it connects you to the National Library of Medicine. This has all the stats, all the things that they have used. They'll say we use talk therapy, medication, and hypnosis for this, and this was the result. Um, they have tons and tons of things in there that can help you if you're doing a presentation for a Rotary Club, for a networking group. Um, it can help you with people that want facts. Uh, if you're working with the medical community, they want facts, they want stats, they want documentation that this worked for IBS or for um, uh, cancer support hypnosis that I do. So, um, yeah, so it's a great resource and that's pubmed.gov. Uh, so let me touch on stage hypnosis. Um, and, and movies. So this is what most people know if you say, what do you know about hypnosis? And they'll say, well, you know, they had a stage hypnosis at my son's school, or the child might say that he's seen, seen that. The movies, oh my God, they're horrifying. They take <laughs> over the power, you know, of their mind and make them do things. And, you know, there was, there's a one out you really have to see, it's called Get Out. It's a newer oh, one. Yeah, it's a horror movie. Right? It's a horror yeah. movie. But this is what people are watching, just so yeah. that you're aware of what their image is. And you'll see bits and pieces of it true, but then, you know, they, they go with it. Um, but it's good to know what, how people are thinking. So, um, stage hypnosis. First of all, they ask for a volunteer. So the people that are going up there are in that frame of mind. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be crazy, right? So they're already open to having that experience. So sometimes you'll see they pull their friend up that really doesn't wanna go up. And the stage hypnosis, he'll be sitting there and he can see that they're not hypnotized. And he'll just have them go back to their seat, right? Um, because they, you cannot hypnotize someone that doesn't want to be hypnotized. Um, it, we do not have that power. <laughs> and um, that's why everyone acts crazy up there and does those crazy things. Because they want to, they're open to it, right? When they're in our office, if we were to tell them to cluck like a chicken, they would just come out of hypnosis because they're there for therapeutic and that would just seem very off to them and they would just come out of hypnosis. So, all right. Um, if you wanna Google famous people that have been hypnotized, Tiger Woods for sport hypnosis. And there's others for stop smoking, stage fright, all kinds of things that, that share um, how hypnosis has helped them. And I had mentioned that um, we'll also be learning tools such as self-hypnosis, EFT, and NLP.